Welcome to the MLB Draft Podcast. I'm your host, Eric Averill, certified financial planner, certified private wealth advisor, former pro athlete, and the co-founder of AWM. I'm joined by my co-host, former Major League Baseball pitcher and certified financial planner, Travis Chick. Our goal on the MLB Draft Podcast is to provide you with the roadmap to successfully navigate the MLB Draft and becoming a professional athlete. You're going to hear from scouting directors, GMs, agents, former and current players, elite performance coaches, and of course, leading financial experts. What has traditionally seemed like a black box, we are going to bring to light the critical details you need to know to help you make the decisions that are in your best interest. So with that, let's jump right in. Hey everyone, welcome back to the podcast. We are excited to spend a few minutes with you today, really talking about the first big business decision that you as an amateur family should be evaluating and making. And uh, we'd like to welcome uh, the expert in this conversation around disability insurance, former NBA eight-year vet, second round pick by the way of the University of Kansas, Eric Chenoweth. Eric, welcome to the podcast. Hey, Eric, thanks so much for having me on. I appreciate it. Yeah, and really for the audience, uh, the reason we're so excited to have Eric on this conversation is, number one, he is a former both collegiate and professional athlete, but it's over the last you know eight years, he has been helping amateur athletes navigate this space of disability insurance, which has been an area very candidly that is very unknown and can be confusing at times. And you might hear some things in the news more around college football players and these disability insurance uh, policies. And so we really want to just bring exposure and education uh, for both you, the athlete, and the parents uh, around this subject. And so with that, Eric, would you mind giving a little background, um, really just the way you think amateur families should be approaching the conversation around disability insurance and for most people just i think contextually eric is a lot of people probably have never even heard about disability insurance and don't know what it is so can you just really start with breaking down the basics for us of course yeah um and again thanks for having me on um just just so you some backdrop on me further as well i I'm, i was also a consumer of disability insurance when i played at kansas my last year i had a disability policy that I had to take out a loan for, and I ended up paying the loan off once I turned professional. But um, I understand the insurance um, piece as a consumer, obviously, now as a professional, you know, working with student athletes and professional athletes for their disability insurance needs. And so if, if any student athlete out there in college, you know, typically for college baseball players specifically, since we're talking about baseball, if you're in your third year of college um, and you're, you're you know, probably in your last year of college, uh, of playing college baseball, and you feel like you have a chance to be drafted uh, in the Major League Baseball draft, I I urge you to be proactive about this and, and seek out what kind of coverage options are available for you. Um, the first step I, I tell everybody uh, would be to get in touch with your compliance director in your athletic department office, um, just so they can reach out to individuals like myself to get options put together for you. Um, just so you know, I, I work with over 60 schools nationwide for disability insurance and the compliance directors and coaches are my, my first um, uh, conversation always. And so obviously I'm going to advise again, speak with your compliance officers, see what they can get uh, available for you. And then also I'm sure the coaches are involved in the conversations as well too. Um, just to give you a, a, a quick um, update on the products that are available for, for baseball student athletes, uh, the first product is permanent total disability. Uh, we call it PTD. It's the cornerstone of our market. Um, it's basically career ending coverage for an injury or an illness. Um, examples would be, you know, be, being in a car accident or diagnosed with cancer or having uh, a shattered uh, a limb. Uh, these things do happen. Um, you know, we've had claims paid out for permanent total disability. And so um, that's the first starting point with of coverage. <clears throat> From there, there's been a couple riders that you can add on to your policy. Uh, most young uh, college baseball players are, feel like they're pretty invincible and that, you know, their career is not going to end due to an injury or illness. And so 
Uh, what Lloyds of London did is created one of two riders, one of which is actually not av available anymore, but I will discuss it just so that we, we know uh, what's out there. The first one being loss of value. Um, loss of value it came around about eight years ago when I got into the insurance industry after being a, a pro athlete. Uh, basically, the loss of value, the way it works is we'll all agree on a projected spot in the draft where we think you're projected, whether it be top 10 or top 20. And then from there, assign what a threshold of which is about 50% of your projected uh, rookie uh, contract. So if you're projected to be a, a top 10 pick and that comes with a $5 million uh, signing bonus, they will assign a $2.5 million threshold so that if you have an injury or illness and sign below that $2.5 million marker, uh, then you would be in position to collect the difference between the 2.5 and what you actually signed for. Um, that product is now unfortunately no longer available for amateur uh, pitchers or pitchers or uh, position players or just amateur baseball players in general, just because the number of claims uh, that were paid out in the past few years um, at my previous firm and specifically we had two claims paid out uh, and they're just they're very rampant um, just because you know, college baseball players, especially pitchers are having Tommy John very often and um, there's the arm injuries are very, very prevalent. And number two, depending on how much uh, a, t a club has in their pool that they can pay uh, their rookies uh, with signing bonuses, uh, there's some discrepancies on, you know, did somebody sign because they were for less because they were injured or, or sick or because there was not enough money in the pool. And so the money got distributed differently. So what Lloyd's did is they just said, we're not going to do this anymore, but they will offer permanent total disability and there is a newer um, rider that we can do which is called critical injury critical injury is broken up into two categories the first category uh, being a quarter million dollar benefit the second category being a hundred thousand dollar benefit uh, the first category uh, includes or a torn rotator cuff a uh, tommy john procedure acl tear uh, achilles tear patella tendonitis tear loss of sight or cancer you would if you have if you sustain one of those injuries or illnesses you'll collect a quarter million dollar benefit tax free uh the second uh category is a hundred thousand dollar benefit uh for torn major muscle groups such as a quadricep uh adductor bicep tricep um or pectoral muscle you, if you tear those uh, you will have a uh hundred thousand dollar benefit paid out to you so sorry for the long uh, answer but the cornerstone is PTD. Loss of value is no longer available for amateur baseball players, and critical injury is the newer product that uh, is being secured by several um, uh, college That's, baseball players. Yeah, that, that was great. I appreciate, um, obviously, breaking down just what are the products available. And I know you uh, specifically are talking <clears throat> about college baseball players. Are these products available to high school players that, you know, they're in that weird transition? They maybe have committed to a specific school. They don't technically fall under their compliance arm of that school yet. And it's like, what's the what's the landscape look like for the high school baseball player? Yes, these products are available for high school players as well, too. Um, I'll be honest with you. I do not typically um, uh, focus on that market of high school players just because uh, for a couple of reasons. I mean, if it's if if I work with a, a family and they want to get coverage for their son, then by all means, I'll do my best to, to, to get them options and we'll get them covered for their last year in high school. Um, I just oftentimes families don't have money to uh, pay the premium, so they have to take out a loan. And so the last thing I want to ever have a, a, a young kid to make a decision based on a loan he took out to buy insurance, where if someone's a second or third round pick and the, the, the right decision is probably to enroll in school and take a scholarship, you know, I've seen and heard in the past where someone might have bought a large insurance policy, took out a loan to buy the insurance policy, and they want to take a smaller signing bonus, um, you know, to pay off this loan they took out to buy insurance with. So if the family, you know, is in a position to um, to pay for the insurance, and by all means, I'll, I'll support them. But I typically try to shy away from from a situation where um, this where the, the family needs to take out a loan, just because then we have a we're making a uh, a loan de decision opposed to a baseball decision on what they should be doing for their career, what's best for them. And then secondly, too, I always encourage um, 
if I if I talk to a family and they say that they have a million dollar sign in bonus on the table and um, they're considering to take this million dollar sign in bonus or go to college for for three years, um, I encourage them to contact the school that they're committed to, to to discuss the school purchasing a disability insurance policy for them while they are on campus for three years. If they're going to get a million dollar sign in bonus and turn it down, um, it's happened you know dozens of times with me where. I'll encourage them to reach out to the university. Um, they'll have a conversation with them saying, listen, you know, I want to come to school. I want to get my degree or get closer to my degree. I want to be a part of the program, but I also don't want to give up a million dollars. So let's, you know, agree that if I turn down this million dollars and do go to college, that you'll buy me a million dollar policy while on campus. Um, once the schools see the, um, this relatively small monetary commitment to this agreement, they typically uh, agree to buy them coverage while they're on campus, considering the student athlete turned down a seven figure signing bonus to go play for their university. Um, so it's important for them to also, you know, speak with the universities about that option for yeah, them as well. Yeah, that's actually very valuable to hear. It's something that um, I actually don't hear talked about very often. And it, it seems like that should be a, a big part of the conversation when you're making a decision to obviously forego a significant signing bonus and, and head to campus. One of the things that you uh, referenced a few different times, and it makes a lot of sense of you essentially don't want an amateur high school family to be a prisoner to this, to this premium uh, payment for the loan. Can you talk about what these type of policies cost and you know, I, I know they're sticker shock to families and maybe talk about the right way to think about these policies um, as opposed to just being a really expensive of product. Can you shed some light on that? Yeah, sure. So right now I'm actually writing a lot of um, college baseball coverage just with with the season starting here pretty soon. Um, so right now, if you're a, um, if you're a position player and you, you know, or in the field, um, the cost for um, coverage is going to be upwards of around forty-five to five thousand um, dollars. You know that, and so for a position player, it's going to be like you know five thousand dollars per million dollars of permanent total disability coverage. Then, um, if they were to add to you know add a critical injury rider as well to it, uh, the critical injury cost is going to be upwards of fifteen thousand dollars. Um, now, the reason why the critical injury is so much more expensive is because the chances of a uh, of a player having one of these injuries is going to be significant. And so uh, Lloyd's is going to hedge their bet on that and make sure that they're going to be charging a higher premium for um, uh, for that potential injury. And so and also, too, it's, it's important to note that uh, pitchers costs are double that of, of uh, position players. So if a if a shortstop costs five thousand dollars per million, a starting pitcher is going to, or a relief pitcher, whatever uh, <clears throat> time they come in the game, their premiums are going to be upwards of double that. Just because, again, the staggering amount of of amateur players having Tommy John procedures, and you know, it's not just Tommy John; it's a shoulder issue. Or there's always these, these young uh, hey, pitchers Arthur, throwing their arms out. Just so the, kind of the walk rates are through, be double for pitchers. Um, you know, this is obviously a big financial decision, but just kind of walk through how often you see these claims actually go through and get paid out. Yeah, good question. Um, it, it, they don't happen often. I'll be honest with you, and I always try to let people know that. And I, I can only speak for my book of business that I personally write. Um, you know, because there's no, um, there's no official tracking of all the Lloyd's policies issued in, in you know, for sports or baseball or what's what have you. All I can do is base it off my book of business, and so. For example, in 2019, I wrote about 150 sports cases. That's across all four major sports, college and professional. So out of those 150 cases that I wrote, I, I have potentially one claim that's going to be filed and paid. And so if you look at that, the, the, the chances are less than 1%. Um, the year before, I wrote about, I don't know, 130 cases, and I had two claims that um, were filed, and there are and the claims are actually being completed and being paid out right now. And so um, if you just look at my book of business, there's it's going to be a less than a 1% chance that those claims are going to happen. But 
they do happen. And I do have anecdotes of situations where I've had clients buy insurance and, and collect a significant payment in the high six figures and, and into the seven figure ranges. And, um, and they've had good experiences with me. And um, some of them have been able to go on and continue to play because it was a loss of value injury or critical injury injury. But I have had, um, I had a college football player have his career end due to a, an injury. So um, they do happen. They do not happen often. I tell people that all the time, but the, what the, the, the genesis behind all this is just to give an athlete that extra peace of mind to go out and perform and play on the field and, and do their job. And I just go back to when I had a policy uh, when I was in college, it did give me the peace of mind to, you know, jump up and try to block a shot or dive on a loose ball on the ground or what have you. And so that's the whole point of these. And so if we can give them a little extra peace of mind to go out and perform, then great. If something crazy happens and they have an injury yeah, illness that ends their career, peace of mind is, hey, we'll, is fantastic. We'll policy file a, claim and support just kind of walk us that, through, uh, you know, timeline. I mean, w- obviously this is something that's important and every family should, if they're in that, you know, spectrum to be able to be drafted this high, they should be considering it. But at what point is the decision, you know, does it kind of need to be made? Should they start contacting, you know, you or, or kind of walk us through that timeline? I, I always suggest that as, as soon as someone's recognized as a potential professional athlete, they should be having the conversation about what's available. Now, that could be for someone who's you know, a high school senior that's projected to be a top two-round pick. They should be considering it when you're in college. And the, the idea of being a major league baseball pick comes up. That's when you need to have the conversation. So, again, once you're identified as a potential pro athlete, then you should be – you know, reaching out to your coaches and your compliance officers on campus if you're in college to see what is available for you. Um, now, typically baseball players, for college baseball players, they secure their coverage right about now, right before the season starting here in the next couple of weeks. Um, same thing with Major League Baseball, pitchers and catchers reporting next week. And so uh, I'm writing a significant amount of uh, Major League Baseball coverage for guys that are getting ready for the season. So um, always – we want to cover guys as we head up to the season. All the policies are 24 hour day worldwide coverage. So if they go home for a break or if they're traveling, they're, they're covered on and off the field. But again, as soon as you are identified as a potential pro, let's research Eric, it. Can and you, see what we can uh, you, you've for. mentioned Lloyd's of London a few times and obviously Travis and I know exactly what you're talking about. Um, but one of the things in the insurance landscape, right, is I feel like uh, most likely every family has a relationship with some type of insurance broker, some insurance company. And uh, these parents might be familiar with disability insurance through their employer if they're self-employed in these conversations. Can you actually break down, is it important to work with someone like yourself who specializes with athletes or, you know, can anybody get access to a disability policy is Lloyd's of London, the actual company or their carrier. And, you know, I know we're going to nerd out here for a second, but I, but I, but I, one of the things I appreciate about you, right. I've been doing this for over a decade now, and we've, we've been um, working on disability policies over that decade with different providers. One of the first things you did with us a long time ago was break down and say, here's just a landscape of the marketplace. There's actually only so many companies providing this and it all funnels through Lloyd's. And I think it's really important because there are people out there that are just going to sell insurance that actually are going to sell them bad products. So can you just walk through who do you trust of identifying whether it's now or during your professional career to trust with your risk management needs and what's the landscape? Yeah, great question. I appreciate the compliment. Um, <clears throat> well, first of all, it's not hard to get an insurance license. So you do see people trying to burgeon into the insurance industry all the time. Um, and so obviously, once you're licensed and you have your E&O insurance, you can go out and sell insurance. And so, um, you know, that's what's great about the industry. Now, there's so many things about the insurance industry you, you don't learn from getting your 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 uh, license. And that is the stuff that you need to learn by working with a reputable firm or partners. And so 
um, for me, you know, I always, um, it, people call me all the time about insurance. Hey man, I, I got 20 employees. I, you know, I need health insurance for my employees. Okay. I have three guys that are great at that. Call these three people and they'll take it from there. They're like, well, well why don't you do it? You're licensed to do it. Well, that's not my expertise. People call me, Hey man, I just got drafted. I need an umbrella policy. Um, or I need this, or, you know, I need car insurance. Hey, yeah, great. You should do car insurance. You should get, you know, renter's insurance. You should get an umbrella policy. Call these three individuals. They're going to take care of you. Well, why can't you do it? Well, I'm not, that's not my specialty to do those types of things. And so for me, the, you know, the niche that I've been working in the past years is the athlete, you know, space. And so I would, you know, I would hope that, um, whether it's an insurance professional that can do it or not would recognize like, listen, I'm really good at home and auto insurance. Then I'm going to do this. And, and Eric's the specialist in, in Lloyd's disability insurance, then he should probably do that uh, policy for you. And so, um, and so with that too, I'll give you the dynamic of Lloyd's as well too. So it's important to, to, to know that Lloyd's is not an insurance company. And so think of, but I want you to think of Lloyd's as um as like the Federal Reserve or the biggest bank in the world, right? So nobody goes to the Federal Reserve for a loan. They go to Wells Fargo, Bank of America, U.S. Bank, what have you. Same thing with Lloyd's of London. You don't go to Lloyd's of London to get an insurance policy. You go to Lloyd's of London and work with what are called cover holders, okay? Cover holders are a collection of syndicates. So if I go to, uh, if I go to cover holder uh, ABC, right, uh, that, col- that cover holder is a collection of, of, of syndicates that take up the risks on the policy. So in the way Lloyd started was um, back, you know, a couple hundred years ago in the old, in the old um, coffee shops. And what would happen was um, ships were going all over the world, whether it's a tea ship or gunpowder ship or livestock, what have you. Well, these ships would sink. And so they needed to find a way to, to, to insure these ships. And so what would happen is a, a boat captain would walk up to a wall and write his boat name and draw a line. And then the rich people in the, in the pubs would walk up and below that line, write or underwrite, which is where the term underwriter came from, 20%. The next person would write up and write 30% until it all adds up to 100%. That is what they call their facility. They call it their slip. That's basically the order. And all those individuals that write their name on there are what are called syndicates. So those collections of syndicates are holding all the risks with the cover holder through Lloyd's. And so with me, if, if you reach out and say, hey, Eric, I got a second baseman who's in a contract year, um, what should he be doing for coverage? I will go to six Lloyd's of London cover holders, and I will get six different quotes, uh, which will come with six different pricing, six different um, uh, wording, policy wording, um, six different limits of coverage. Everything is different. And so we're doing an apples to apples comparison, but it's going to be a Macintosh apple versus a you know, red delicious apple, what have you. And that's when we get into the policy wording and see what we feel best and most comfortable with. Now, each company has different wording. And so there's some red flags out there. There's some companies that have a degenerative exclusion. There's companies that have subrogation wording where a third party can be pursued uh, for a claim. There's a uh, limit of indemnity where if you have two different policies that you can only max out on coverage on one. Uh, there's uh, uh, several more different things that doing this for eight years and getting fielded, you know, lots of questions from attorneys or athletes or financial advisors, or what have you. I know these policies in and out. And so I can go through them and explain this, the spirit of all these policies and how they actually work. So back to my original point. If you if someone's newly licensed and they want to burgeon into this market, that's great. But do you really are you a real expert in, in what you're doing? Are you going to make sure that you can give sound advice to, you know, a player who's this is their livelihood. And so if something goes wrong, you know, be prepared for that. And so um, with me, like I said, my specific you know, specialty is working with athletes for their disability insurance and the life insurance. And so I feel very comfortable in those conversations. And so, and also too, even further, I have deep relationships with 
all these cover holders um, for Lloyd's of London. I, I send them millions of dollars in premium every year. They've had, I've had claims paid out with them. I've been to London to, to meet with them at, in Lloyd's and I've sat at the box and I've, I've stamped policies with them and they've come out here and met with us. And we're constantly working together as a true partnership to, to number one, make sure we're providing robust coverages for athletes. And uh, number two, to make sure that the market's preserved and that we can continue to do this forever. Because like we just saw with loss of value going away for amateur athletes, we want to make sure that PT, PTD stays here. We want to make sure that CI stays here. We want to make sure we're doing this the right way so we can continue to do this for a long time. And we're not going to do that if there's mistakes being made and, and um, that was policies fantastic. issue that Thank should not you. have been And, and so, you hit on the thing again, I really wanted my niche to is, drill down is on sports was space with Lloyd's, the and that's where I feel most comfortable. the actual language, right? It's, it's the, the one thing that none of us enjoy doing is actually reading all the fine print, but... As we know, insurance companies are not trying to hand mm -hmm. out cash. Um, and so it, as we've worked through so many policies, you know, together, you've educated us on, hey, here is where this language is different from that policy. And yes, that one's got a cheaper premium, but here's why. And so I just think navigating that space is, is so important. And we've talked earlier on this podcast, whether it's your agent or your private wealth advisor, your CPA. Uh, expertise matters, right? The analogy we always use is you're not going to just have some orthopedic surgeon perform your Tommy John, right? It's going to be Andrews or Alatrosh and, and so there's the specialization. And so being sensitive to time, I, I really appreciate uh, you uh, giving us this, this information. I'm going to put your contact information and everything in the show notes so that people listening, whether it's the agents, it's the parents, it's the players, uh, maybe it's coaches or, or compliance departments that they can reach out to you. But before we go, what are some last imparting words that you would give to these players that are that are headed into the draft? Um, I, I just tell people all the time, make sure that you, number one, protect what you've earned so far and protect what you're going to be earning. Because we, we, you know, as a young athlete, you spent the last 10 plus years getting to your, getting to where you're at now. And you're 12 to 18 months away from a significant, you know, change in your life with a uh, major league baseball contract. So protect what you've earned now. Um, once you do make it, protect what you're going to make next. And so we see that all the time where, and we see what pitchers yeah, are signing well, for upwards again, of 100 Eric, plus million, even in $200 and, uh, million dollar ranges. Really appreciate I just, it. And for I just all the listeners, people, thank you once again for your guys' and protect attention. what you're going to earn. Hopefully this has been valuable for you. Our goal is to continue to provide uh, excellent resources for you and uh, help you make the best decisions. And so until then, uh, have a great day. And we look forward to you joining us on the next episode of the MLB Draft Podcast. Hey, thanks so much for listening to today's show. We hope that you enjoyed it. Our goal here with the MLB Draft Podcast is to make this the go-to resource for all families and athletes looking to take their career to the next level. And so this show really is all about you, and we would love to hear from you. Are there any questions you have, topics, that you would love for us to cover, please do reach out. You can shoot us an email at eric at athletewealth.com or travis at athletewealth.com. Of course, you can find us on social. We're on all the major platforms at Athlete Wealth. And if you'd like to set up a phone call with us, you can reach us by going online to athletewealth.com and you'll see right at the top of the page there's a button where you can schedule a call directly with us and so we would love to hear from you and until next time stay focused stay hungry and be a pro